Hey everyone, we're just getting set up. Thanks for joining us. Hey Dom Dom, just getting set up. Um, while we're waiting for people to come in, why don't you guys tell us where you are, what's happening, have you sailed this week? If so, how are the conditions? How's the progress? Yeah, has the coaching been helping? That was that's actually a really interesting question. Um, if it already helps someone on, 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 on her sailing, then, and what? Is yeah, so has the coaching helped? If so, what? What have you noticed? I think I've noticed some things. Um, I have obviously haven't been sailing because of my knee, which is still getting better. Uh, I'm doing a lot of physio and I'm not going to do a surgery on it. That's the latest from the doctors. But I've learned a lot from watching the videos that everyone sends in. In the instructionals that you see in the magazines and in the videos that we write, that the pros write, it often just comes from our own experiences, right? So we think, okay, what do I do to do this move? Or what did I do to learn this move and then we write that in the article or, or put it in the video. But what I've learned from this process of seeing everyone's videos is I've seen a, a better spectrum of what's going on and what um, mistakes people are making and what the common mistakes people make. And it's really helped me to kind of figure out how to teach, how to teach some of these things. Um, which is really cool. I think it's been really, really useful to get everyone's footage and to, to see it side by side and to see what people are doing well, see what people are doing wrong. And yeah, I think it's really given me a good understanding of, of what to focus on in the coaching. Um, and so that's been pretty cool. So thank you guys. Thanks everyone who's joined us on the weekends. Thank you everyone who's sent in footage. Um, it's not too late. I really encourage everyone to send in footage, whether it's a GoPro from your helmet or a mass mount or someone filming you with an iPhone from the beach, all footage is good footage. So number one, it's important that you watch it. And then number two, you can send it to, to me or someone else to get advice on it. And that is really a huge, huge benefit. It's really the best way to learn. Like if I'm trying to learn, if I'm training, uh, I try to get footage of myself every day and I can analyze that footage and that's that's how I get better um, and it's the same with all the other pro guys so footage is key cool we've got Toby saying um, that he's improved the carb jibes that's great cool what um, what helped with the carb jibes Toby yeah I'm curious too um, that that sounds interesting yeah, so today, so we're gonna go through footage that was posted in the group. Uh, so I, I kind of like this format for for these weekend things. So going through everything that's posted uh, during the week before in the Facebook group. It's Graham Ezzy Windsurf Coaching on Facebook. The link is in my Instagram profile. And yeah, so we just go through the footage that was posted there and the questions that are posted there. Uh, we're gonna go over tax a little bit today bottom turns So I think I've seen a lot of bottom turns in these videos and I've got some Tips that I think will help people figure out a Different approach to bottom turns that will really get hopefully unlock unlock some of the the turning um, in the bottom turn uh, a little bit on Takas and I think that's it, but we'll, we'll just go through the Facebook group, go through everything that's there. Um, Eric is saying that in Turkey we had a four days lockdown and the best wind of the year. Oh no, but at least you can winter from tomorrow on. Uh, I want to see some footage if you can get some. That sounds great. Um, Paul, you've been sailing. Have you had any breakthroughs or any? have you learned anything? Mm. I'm always learning, I think. 
um, breakthroughs, I don't know, but um, like I think it was like the last thing we talked about was like the com like when you compared like the footage like from button turns, like mm -hmm. when I sent like the bumpy button turn I had, mm -hmm. and where you say okay, just like you know like maybe you can open this um, th this one on it's, I think it's in the Facebook group, and yeah. it really um, f is forcing me now to just stay on the rail you know like in the button turn on the wave and now i'm watching also like um other clips from other riders like yesterday i watched some clips from ricardo campello like, mm -hmm. from end of last year on his instagram account and he's doing like a lot of really bumpy um button turns but he's like really you can see like you explain that like here in in, in, in in the group that you're really just like trying to what what did you say there like trying to you're really pushing pushing you're staying on the, on the rail push you absorb the chop with your knees stay bent um and you want to keep pushing up right. up the wave as well so and kind of give a shit of the bomb just like <laughs> yeah just push through it yeah don't let don't let the bump stop you so right. we can go through some bottom turns now so i'm going to show so i'm going to switch views and we'll look at the at the Facebook, um, let me. Um, so we're gonna go to the Facebook. So I think the best way to do this is we're gonna go through a few of the different bottom turns first, and then we'll come back. And we'll look question, at this kind of as like a general, write it down. general topic. Um, yeah, if you've got a question through any point of this, write it, write it in the, in the, in the, the chat or in the, the face, the, the question thing. Um, okay, so the first one we've got, so is of Paul. So like I said before, so we're just going to go through and watch a bunch of the videos first and then talk about some of the general general things, okay? So, here's the video from Paul. So Paul sent this in because he had a question about hitting chop, hitting a bump in the bottom turn, which he does in this one. And his question was about how to deal with it. Yeah. So there he hits the chop, right there. And then goes for the off lip. Okay, so we've got that clip. And then we've got another bottom turn. Um, so this is in the Facebook group, right? This is where everyone's been posting and we, we've been discussing. And it's where we're pulling pulling the coaching from for these these weekend sessions. All right, here's a clip from Toby. This is in Tenerife, in Cabezo, looks like. Is it your highlight? No. Oops, that's the wrong. Sorry. I th Here, let's go back to that. Okay, so we've got, got these two bottom turns that we're starting with. I posted in response to Paul, I posted, I found a video of myself doing a bottom turn that, um, where I hit, hit some chop and bounce. So that's one for me. Okay, so what I did, uh, we're going to start with Paul's and then we're going to go through Toby's and we're going to talk about some general general aspects of bottom turning. So what I did for Paul's, I, I did this like side by side, right? And we look at the bottom turn, bottom turns right next to each other. So off the bat, there are a couple 
differences. So I'm a bit more upright on the board and my, my legs are a bit straighter. Now you can start with more bent legs. There's definitely some variability here in terms of how you're approaching it. But what I want you to be aware of is kind of where your, your weight is, where your center of mass is. So I'm a little bit away from, from my gear. There's a bit of distance here. And my board is kind of flat before it goes on the rail. And I'm coming kind of a bit straight in, which helps me build some speed before going in the turn. Um, and so like this is a good like kind of neutral stance before then I start driving. Um, Paul also has a good stance. I think that you want to be careful of not getting too low too early because then you don't have as much power to push into the turn. Um, and you want you don't want to have the sail too far back. So the sail is a little bit, little bit back. That's kind of two main things that we see there. And then going into the turn, um, something that I really think is important, and we're going to there's a lot that we're going to talk about with bottom turns today, but I've got my shoulders square with my hips and they're both facing that toe side rail, right? So the shoulders and the, and the hips are both facing the toe side rail and they're getting ready, getting ready to turn. And so I've got my weight up and forward. I've got this like kind of vertical line where then I'm getting ready to press. Um, and then once we get into the turn, so then I put my weight forward, I'm leaning forward again, we've got this, like the, the hips and the shoulders are square with each other. And the more of these videos that I've watched and the more that I've seen from the clips that people have sent in, I think that that's really important to have the, the hips square with the shoulders and to think about that transfer of power. It's almost like a, a weightlifting move uh, or Olympic weightlifting move. And so like with Paul, so Paul's doing a good turn. He's getting a lot of spray, getting carving, but you can see that the upper body is pointing in a completely different direction than the lower body. So the lower body is pointing that way. And the upper body is pointing that way. So they're actually at like a 90 degree angle to each other. And that's stopping the amount of force that then he can transfer into the turn. Right? Does that make sense? So you want your hips and your shoulders to be facing facing the same direction. So you're really getting this drive and power. Um, so here's the moment where we both hit the hit the chop. Because I have this kind of like power stance, I'm able to push more through the chop. Um, whereas if I'd been a little bit more back or a little bit more upright, then the chop would have kind of caused me to bounce more. So as I hit the chop, I bend my knees and I'm pushing harder to push through it, but it helps because I'm in that kind of power, power stance. And then, so here you can see that I've kind of bounced out, but I try to keep the, keep the rail engaged and keep driving. I try not to stop, stop driving as I come up the wave and then it's really important as you're coming up the wave face to keep driving until right before you do the turn. And so then I'm, I'm still driving on my rail here and then I get to this point of weightlessness as I, as I transition over to the other rail. Um, so Paul, you said before that that side-by-side -side comparison helps you. What, what did you find was most useful with that comparison? Like the one thing you said already is like um, try to engage the rail as much as possible like um, and not like to um, um, like be ab too abstracted or be too disturbed from the bump like just like just like go like slice the bump you know kind of of your rail like just like go go really through it and that was like really helpful to see okay if there's a bump like the professionals are just like just like go through it and just like trying to still engaging the rail um, in the water. That was really helpful actually for me because what helps me is that, oh, it's possible to do it. You know, it's not like, oh, it's not like, okay, there's a bump and then like the wave is kind of messed up or gone. No, there's a, like, there is a way to, 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 to still like have a nice bottom turn and um, 
hit the lip. That was really helpful for me. Okay, cool. So just to see and visualize it and then just to be aware of it. And then I say, okay, then let's go. It's like seeing people crashing, you know, it's like, oh, you can crash. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it's not that bad, you know, like that's, uh, it's kind of the same. That helps really much. Actually. Okay, cool. And so now I want to get into some of the body position stuff. So if we go back to this turn from Paul, so there's a moment here where he's got his knees bent and his hips in. And if we look at this video from Toby, there's a little bit of a similar position with like the knees are bent and the hips are kind of in, you know, like the butt is pushing forward. And that's a position that you always want to avoid. So the position you want to be in your bottom turn is something more like this, where your butt is kind of sticking out and your legs are more like uh, in a power position. Um, so here, can you, um, sure. can you film me? I'm going to go to the, to the wall. So what I've seen from a lot of these videos and from, from analyzing everything that's been sent in is that a lot of people are turning with their knees. And so the bottom turn doesn't, you, you, you never want to be doing like stuff like this, right? You want to be thinking about being in a power position, right? You want to be taking the power from your body and translating it to the rail of your board, right? And so you're not, you're not turning like just like this, like this, you're not just using your knees, you're not, you're definitely not going up on your toes. It's about taking all of your power and transferring it to that rail. So it's a position that's more similar to like a weightlifting position or like a power lifting position than to anything, anything else. So you never want to be like this with your, with your, um, with your knees bent, but your, your hips in, you want your butt out, you know, you want your, your, your back engaged, your core engaged, engaged through, through your butt, through your thighs, through your, your quads, transferring that power down into your feet um, and not, not going on top of your toes, right? Like you want, if you think like, if you've got your foot on the board, you want to be pressing it over as much as you can. So you want to be generating as much force through the front of your feet as you can which like this, if you're like this, the force is kind of going just down, whereas you want to be, you want to be really like levering your feet. So what you can try to do is set up with a wall or a guardrail or something and set your feet a little bit wider than shoulder width, what you would normally do in your straps and really like lean forward and come to the wall and really feel that that pressure in the balls of your feet and really engage and feel that you're pushing through here 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 and you're really pushing it's like you're trying to push push the floor away from you using this part of your foot right and that's the position that you want to be in when you're bottom turning and you want your, your shoulders to be square with your hips, right? You don't want to be, you don't want to be too much like this. If you're turning that way, um, and so, I mean, a little bit of that disconnect is fine, but I think just to get get the bottom turn figured out, you want to start by thinking about being square, and then from there there are variations you can do. But so like set up on a wall like this where you're leaning forward, and just I'm really drive through your feet like that and, and get. You know, your, your butt is out a bit, your back is engaged, your core is engaged, you've got your power coming through here down to your feet, and you're really pressing, pressing against the floor. And that's the feeling that you want. So it's, it's not this, it's not this, you know, it's this driving power that then you're transferring to the rail of the board. Um, so, Paul, do you want to try that? And we can see how it, how it looks. 
You know, it's like eight in the morning. You know? <laughs> yeah, so. You can come a little bit closer to the wall, I think. There, yeah. Yeah, and get that, get that drive. So you can come a little bit, a little bit lower in your knees. Yeah, and do you feel that through your through your hips and through your lower back? Yes. 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 And you you're pressing on your on your feet? I'm pressing like kind of here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that looks good. A little bit here and here. Yeah. So let's see. And like also like a little bit of. So let's see that again. Yeah, I think that looks that looks really good. So and keep us like static push. So like just like constant drive. Yeah. Constant drive. Let me see. Keep keep doing that. <laughs> keep doing that. Me breathe. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That yeah. That that looks good. That looks good. One thing you want to think about, which which you're doing a good job of, but you don't want your knees to go to go in, right? You want you want to keep the knees uh, straight, like over the feet. You don't want like okay. you don't want your knee to like fall in. All right. Which can happen sometimes. Um, because then you're losing power. So something that can be useful as well is to work on like your, um, so we don't have a rubber band, but if you had a rubber band, we could do some like glute exercises that just keep your, so it's like, it's like kind of like there engaged, which helps um, position your knee correctly and helps you really drive, mm -hmm. drive well using the power. So Paul, if you do that, you want to do that one more time, and while you're in that position, tell me if it feels any different than what you think of as a bottom turn. Okay. It definitely feels stronger. Yeah. When I would do my bottom turn, like, and it's <laughs> no boom. Yeah, there's no boom. That's true. But you look good. No, that looks. Really, it really feels like. Because like this part here now, yeah. like, when you do that, it's really, how do you say, like it's, I can really feel how this part is now engaging like with, right. the, with the bottom, so which I think is super important, like even on the bottom turn that you have that also like that uh, security feeling, like right. you feel, okay, I'm still connected, I'm still engaged with like with my board and that's like, I'm not looking what's happening, like what the way is right. doing with me, it's like you are driving, forcing, whatever, like, you are um, creating that forcing. So that's really helpful. So I would really highly suggest, like, that you guys try it now at home. Yeah, so do this, yeah. do this on a wall like that or on a guardrail or something and feel that drive, feel the connection from your feet to your core and so that your whole body is engaged as you're pressing. I, I think that it will really really helps. So, yeah. Paul... Yeah, and um, as, you, as you said, maybe yeah. just like, what's really important is, as you said, like, that you feel like some tense here and here, and especially like, I think like here, you want to feel it like here. Like, and yeah. you feel like that it feels like strong, not wobbly or something. Yeah. Like you want to feel like, oh, that is like kind of, okay, that's like kind of locked. Yeah, it's like, that's a great, that's a really great observation. So like, I feel like I'm one unit. So it's not like my feet are doing something and my knees are doing something. Right. I'm one power unit, right? Or you're one, the, ideally you're one, one unit of power that's pushing, right. pushing on, the, on the rail and you're, you're transferring all of, that, all of that force. So we had a question about how does this translate to onshore? So let's look at this clip again from Toby um, because this is in onshore conditions. And onshore is going to be more difficult for the bottom turn uh, because you're doing a longer radius turn and also because you're fighting the wind. So when it's down the line condition, side shore or side off, you have less of a turn to do and you're in a neutral position with the wind. Whereas in an onshore bottom turn, not only do you have a longer radius to do, but you've actually got more wind in your sail the whole time, which makes it really difficult. So the onshore bottom turn is difficult. 
but some of the same concepts apply. So, so here you can see that Toby has his legs a little bit straight, his hips are a bit in. So what he wants to be doing is driving with his lower body like we were talking about just now um, against the wall. And so that's something that Toby can practice. Now in onshore, you are going to have to open up your sail more. So there is going to be some disconnect between your upper and lower body. But ideally, you want to make that as minimum as possible. Um, and the best way to do that is, is through timing and setup on the wave. And so if you're in the right spot on the wave. Can I, can I see something? Yeah, so we're going to watch this. Yeah, you want to play that? I just want to play it again because so, I have a question. Yeah, so let's play this clip. I'm going to say something and then, and then Paul's got a question. And if you guys have questions, write them in and we'll go over them. So, Toby's uh, question was about how to, how to get a more vertical bottom turn. He feels like he's stuck going parallel to the wave. And so what I wanted to point out is his driving motion with the lower body, it starts off strong here. Like I think this is a good starting position, but he needs to continue into this push. And instead he backs off of the push. And so he's standing more upright, the hips are in, he's not in a power position. And so the board is going flat and he, he's not really on the rail there. So he wants to be in that power position, like we were talking about against the wall, the whole time that he's bottom turning. Now, there's one other secret here that would help Toby tremendously. And then we're gonna get to Paul's question. And that just has to do with wave selection and wave timing. So it looks like this wave is about to break and Toby starts his bottom turn, but it doesn't. And so there's, there's very little power. You can see that, that the wave just has this little bit of white water on the top. And so what's happening is that Toby's going for a bottom turn, but then the wave starts to disappear. disappear. And this can happen in Cabezo, especially when it's high tide. I don't know what the tide conditions were like on this, this day at this time, but where the wave looks like it's gonna break, but then it doesn't. And so like I've said before, timing and placement are everything. So the biggest issue with this, aside from um, that, that lower body power stance that we're talking about, the biggest issue is just the wave, right? The wave is not offering the opportunity to come up more more vertical and to turn on it right it's it's just not there the the wave is very very sloped it's it's it doesn't have this shape it has it has this shape which is really really difficult to turn on um and so it's so important especially in onshore conditions to be on the right waves and be in the right place on the waves and it, it will make it so much easier for you to turn all right paul what's your question so my question on Toby's videos, because um, I think it's a great example, is like, that is like um, a small wave. Mm -hmm. um, on short conditions, it looks also like a little bit light. So my question is like, when it's like conditions like this, is it better to, and now like helping with the words, it's like to do a, like a narrow bottom turn or like a, you know what I mean? like don't curve so much out like just like staying more on the wave instead of like maybe that my question is do i lose a lot i think i lose a lot of speed when i go like all the way down and then like sheeting out and then like going again like, like fighting against the wind mm -hmm. and the wave and then going up because what i what i experience is like that my bottom turn in this position even if like like let's imagine the wave is breaking like the wave is 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 like it is i would do like maybe like a, a couple like like a little a really mushy bottom turn because i don't have any speed mm -hmm, i don't have mm -hmm. like not enough power so my question is like because i want to have that speed that's maybe like one break that i had this week on this side is like you want as much speed as possible on the waves so yeah it really really helps you especially when you have like when you hit the critical section like or when it's really like 
almost break it and you want to hit the lip there, you want to have that speed because that really carry you like um, away from that critical part. So that happens a couple of times this week to me, which like opens my mind for, oh yeah, you want more speed, not like to slow you down. So that my question is like, is it better to like go all the way down or would it be better on this wave if Toby would like go more like this? So I think this wave is not worth riding. Probably I think period, yeah. I think this wave is not worth riding. The wave is not op offering much potential. You can see that it's it's really slopey. There's not much bottom. And then when it starts to break, it's just like a crumble at the top of the wave. You know, it's it's not really actually breaking. So I would say like this wave is just, just not worth riding. If you were to do any kind of turn, I would do like Paul is talking about a really short turn and try to get to this white water because that looks like kind of the only little bit of power source here. And so if you came just like really short turn, get the bottom of the board under that, try and get some speed from it to continue on. That's my, actually my question. So like the question is like here, how to get most out of waves like this? Because yeah. we like are most of us like facing a lot of waves like this. So even if we have a bad wave selection. Well, I think there are better ways for the day. And so I, th I think you should really not be on waves like this, period. These waves should go unridden. But it happens sometimes. But try not to. <laughs> yes. You shouldn't ride them. I, I but don't, I think we still can you, learn. Yeah, we I can... don't think you can fix it. I don't think so. I think it's like wave selection is so important. That's and true. I think like it's, there's no, like it's, there's no way to make it not important. If you know these waves should not be ridden, it's no, you know. But for example, you told me sometimes like when you look at my videos, you tell me some. I want to see you that you hit the white water section. I would yeah. never imagine to hit the white water section. I think it's not really worth it. But at the end, it is because you learn something. That's just like my question. Yeah. So I mean, I if totally you were agree. to if you were to ride this wave, what I would do is maybe wait a bit, and then try and hit maybe this white water here. Yeah. That's coming. Um, but you want to hit it. Yeah, maybe you will pull out an air tucker or something. <laughs> no, sure. it's, it's just not possible. That, but that's my point. Is it's, it's not possible to do anything really on this wave because it, it has so little power. Um, uh, but, I mean, if you, maybe you want to turn off this white water bit because especially when it's, you know, when the waves don't have any power, it's so hard to cut back because you need that power of the wave pushing against you to do a good cutback. So then... You want to find the white water just just to get some speed to get some um, some of that projection back into the wave. Um, I mean, wave riding in onshore conditions are also like a different game of wave riding. Yeah, onshore is definitely messed up, but it's still a nice cutback. You know, Toby, I like you know you you struggled with that bottom turn, like you said. You know, it was a long bottom turn, pretty parallel with the wave, but I like that you're getting on the rail here you know i can see that there's a good amount of rail engagement and then there's actually another section here so this is actually kind of interesting so i felt like that wave was pretty bad but this section is a little bit steeper um and i say you would make an attack of that no but but that's something to that's something to hit do i have any footage of me in onshore conditions you know i do um the question is just where all my footage is on, on a bunch of different hard drives. So I found this this from my Ginchu video um, that I released. I don't remember when I released it. Where there's some onshore riding. Um, it's starboard tack onshore riding. Um, do I have footage from Silk? I do somewhere. So I've got to kind of try and dig up dig up that old footage join the group and um I'll, I'll post it in the group so here's here's some onshore footage um so i'm really using so like again so this wave does not have much much power but there's a power source here and so i'm trying to come up into that power source to then push my board against it you can so you can see that there's like a little bit of steepness here and so I'm trying to use that, use this to like bank to get speed into the turn. So then I'm like really pressing on my legs. So I'd like to see on myself, I'd like to see my hips a little bit more rotated this way. Like I think, I think they're pointing too much down the line and I'm driving 
too much off of my knee. I'd rather see, like I was talking about before, more force going through both both my legs. Um, so see, like I'm really driving off the knee, which I, again, I'd like to be driving more off my hips. Um, and then because it's onshore, you end up with this like disjoint thing because you've got to keep the sail open with the wind. Uh, so again, so I, I'm leaning pretty hard into the turn. And then when I start coming into the wave, then I kind of come up and have this weightlessness. And so here I go into a taka. And so this, we can go through the taka because we've had a lot of questions about takas. So with takas, like... It's a good bridge, actually. People in the group were discussing whether you should go vertical or not vertical, whether you should sheet in or sheet out, whether you should push against the sail or pull against the sail. And, the, you know, the truth, and this is maybe a, a frustrating truth, is that it depends. There's not one right answer. There's so many different ways to do a taka. And this is true with a lot of moves in windsurfing, not all moves, like forward loops, I feel like there's really like one good way to do them. And there's some slight variations within that one way, but with takas and, you know, cutbacks, there's a lot of different styles and conditions. And so the, the kind of condition that you have really affects how, how to, to do the move. So in this video, there's a few different takas that I do, and so we'll go through them because they're all slightly different. So this, I'm coming up to a whitewater. Again, there's not much power in this section, but I'm forcing the board around. So I'm really driving hard on this front leg, and I'm pushing around with the back leg to get the slide and sheeting in to get through the wind. And then once I'm sliding backwards, then I sheet out. You can see I'm, I'm kind of sheeting out, I'm pushing against the sail. Here I do it even stronger. Can you see that through the video? So like here, I'm really pushing against the sail. You can see there's a moment there where I sheet out, where the sail pops. See that? It switches, the wind comes from the other side. And what that does is it helps give me a little bit of control because then I've, I've got the wind coming against the sail and it's, it's like I'm kind of sailing on the lee side of the sail, pushing against it to try and get the rotation, leaning very far forward to make sure that the back of the board doesn't catch in the water. Leaning forward. I mean, you're almost leaning over your nose. Yeah, like you can see like here how far forward I'm, I'm, I'm leaning. And that's to make sure that you can keep um, keep the rotation going. So let's let's find. I think there's some other wave rides in here from onshore. So there's. Oh, do we have a tack too? Okay, so uh, tacking, um, which we've also had a lot of questions about. I really like to grab the mast there. I feel like it gives me a lot of control. So push the sail back, open the door, come around to the new side. Bring the sail around, close the door. Here's a forward loop. So again, so it's I like thinking of like you make this X with your body, and then you close the X, pushing forward the front arm, bringing the back hand in, wide grip, looking back, bring the legs up. Come around. All right, but let's find some more bottom turns. Taka or bottom turn? Uh, both. So, well, that's not, that starts too late. Because I think you have all, like the um, big sequence of the taka in your group. So, again, really driving, driving with the body and trying to get like that early drive. So I think, I think in onshore, it's really important to get a hard start to the bottom turn. And so you get the rail engaged, get your body engaged. You can keep your, your shoulders and your hips square. And then once you're kind of, through that halfway point of the turn, you can st start coming back up the wave and that's when you're opening up the sail because you have to, otherwise you're gonna get backwinded. And that's when the, the, the upper body starts to disconnect from the lower body. Um, we can watch it here a bit. Um, so here, yeah, so it's kind of more of the same. So this like hard, drive on, on the beginning and then coming up the wave more clue first, bringing the board under. The harder you turn in the beginning, 
the more of a weightless feeling that you can get coming up the wave, which in onshore is really important because uh, the tendency is for the, the wind to really pull you and, and to pull the sail. And so like the harder you're turning, the more speed you have in the beginning, uh, the less of an issue that is because you're because you're going faster and, and the dynamics of the sail um, make it make it kind of de-weight. Um, so here, I think this is another Taka. So this is again like there's not a lot of power in this section, but I'm I'm really kind of forcing forcing the tail around, sheeting in to get through the wind, looking with the head again, looking where you want to go is so important. Getting backwards, sheeting in until I'm through the wind, and then to help the rotation, I push out against the sail and come around. Um, so, so here as well. So like again in the onshore. So. I'm really leaning here, but there's like a disjoint between the upper and lower body, which you want to avoid, but in onshore, sometimes it's really impossible to because you've got to keep the sail um, keep the sail open so you don't get backwinded. Um, so here's another taka. So again, it's it's really similar for the talk. Same thing for the talk is like you f I force the tail around, come backwards, sheet out to help with the the rotation. Let me find some more bottom turns. This is a little bit more side shore. So that's a little bit more side shore. But in general, okay, there's another taka. So this taka is really similar to the taka uh, that was submitted to the group. And so you can see that I'm not approaching it vertical at all. I'm going, in fact, as non-vertical as is possible. Like my board is almost pointing more in than out. Um, but I come onto the, the little whitewater ball, really push out on the tail and let the sail open up and then lean forward sheeting in with the sail pushing the sail forward sliding and then at this point I want to speed up my rotation to come around so I'm, I'm really kind of pushing against the sail sheeting out a little bit and then bring it back around um, this is oh that's a glitter um, so I'm gonna start looking for more onshore footage um, because I think that that can be really useful because most people do sail in more onshore conditions. But in general, you want the same principle. So you want to have that power body stance like we were looking at to get the rail engaged. And the difference with onshore is that kind of halfway through your bottom turn, you're gonna have to open up your sail more. You're gonna have to kind of disconnect your upper and lower body more uh, in order to not get backwinded. I think that in onshore more than down the line conditions, it's super important to be on the right position on the wave because then you're not adding more time, you're not adding more complication. So if you're in the right position on the wave and you just drop in and you do your bottom turn with no extra thoughts, with no extra additions to the turn, you're in a much better position than not because if in onshore especially if you're having to readjust then you're losing speed the wind is getting in your sail and it's, it's messing you up so in onshore e even more than down the line your position is so important it really really matters where you are on the wave uh, and you want to really think about these power sources right so you want to be going from power source to power source and and onshore, it is it is so important because you the dynamics of the sail are so difficult, right? You're going from this like fully powered sail in the bottom turn to maybe no power in the cutback, or too much power, too much lateral pull. It's it can be really difficult in onshore to get the right 
sail dynamics. And so you want to be really on the best place on the wave to make that as easy as possible. Uh, so, so to remove as many of these factors as possible. Um, yeah, does, does that make sense? Does that make sense to everyone? Does that make sense, Paul? <laughs> that makes sense. Um, otherwise for everyone, so that makes sense for everyone. <laughs> that really makes sense. Just thinking about how to adapt it to my sailing today. Yeah, so... I really, I really want to try the tucker because I want to really learn them. I'm just like, that's maybe a good question for the people who are already learning them or want to learn them. What would you think, or how did you learn them? Can you remember? Like probably a long time ago. Yeah, I learned them in kind of small waves off of the white waters. I think the white waters are the easiest way to learn the taka, at least to get the rotation. So you might not land them in front of the wave, but you get the rotation right. And so you hit the white water with some power in your sail, uh, do like a slidey cutback where you're really staying on top of the board and then pushing, you know, sheeting in with the sail and, and kind of keeping the sail forward, but not focusing on the sail too much. I think you really want to focus on the board. Um, and just get that rotation and it, if you start sliding around on the top of the wave and going off the back and once you get comfortable with that rotation then you can start trying them uh, with the intent to make it back inside the wave. Uh, the talk is a fun move and I think especially in onshore conditions uh, it's something that most um, good good sailors can can start learning. You know if you can back loop, if you can do uh, bottom turns and cutbacks, if you, you know you, you can do talkas. Uh, I think it's a it's a safe safe move to learn as well. You don't want to do it in, in too radical of a condition, but uh, I think it's I think it's a pretty good move to learn. It's a fun move to learn. It's a flashy move as well. Um, you know, have fun showing off with them. I think. Uh, yeah. So that's we talked quite a bit about bottom turns and about talkers. If you have more questions, write them in. Put them in the group. Send us your footage. Um, I want to say one thing about tax we've had a few people send in tax and i've been really impressed so toby sent in a tack uh, paul sent in a, a tack and i think they're kind of perfect tax they're all really good uh, i just want to show one tack from myself uh just with a few with just one like small pointer so here's here's a tack from me on the outside at hokipa and so there's something i'm doing here that I find really useful and that is that I'm trying to gain ground on my tack so watch how far watch how far I carve upwind how much ground upwind I'm making right so I, I started here and I've carved all the way up here and so I've made all this ground so you can see that I don't then I don't cross my white water, right? So you see that? So the white water is here to here. So I, that's something that I want all you guys to try. Um, I've been really impressed with your tax. I've been impressed with your tax, Paul. Um, but try to not cross your white water. So try to get as much ground as you can upwind. Uh, and the, the test for that is, is making sure that you uh, see how far you are from your, from your wake. Uh, from when you were going out. And this is really useful for conditions with strong current or just, you know, even if it's if there's no strong current and it's like down the line conditions, but you're trying to get back up to the peak, maybe you've had a long wave ride and you're trying to get upwind, uh, it's always good to be able to get upwind. So if you work on that with your tacks, you'll, you'll have a lot more confidence and, you know, a lot more ability, fundamental ability in a wider variety of conditions, so that's what I want to see people working on. And it helps you also. It helps you also um, to stay um, more uh, upwind on the wave. Yeah. And no keep. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if that um, applies to every sport in the world, but <clears throat> if we focus on a um, little bit on the conditions on Okipa and we find in different areas in the world, it's like it really helps you to stay more upwind on the wave. And then from there on, you can really adjust your positioning, which is much more um, helpful than um, like do it at the end of the wave, which is much more harder when you just like use yeah. the end of the wave to go more upwind and then go into your bottom turn, right? So we're getting a question. Uh, the question is, any advice on what turn 
around to use in various conditions, onshore, side off, versus underpowered, powered. So the, the question got a little bit cut off, so I, I'm not sure if that's the end of the question, onshore, side off, versus underpowered, powered. Um, so is, is this about jibing versus tacking? Or is it about bottom turns? So can you just clarify that? So I think for onshore conditions especially, you want to be tacking because that helps keep you upwind. Uh, but in general, it doesn't really matter. I think you want to be comfortable both tacking and jibing. They both have, both tacks and jibes have their benefits. So tacks are really good for turning around quickly and for staying upwind jibes they take a little bit longer but you can carry more speed through them so jibes are really good uh, if you need to be coming out of it quickly right so if you want to stay planing if you want to get onto a swell and ride that swell right so you're jiving on the face of the swell and you stay planing stay on the wave uh, that can be a really useful skill in general i think you'll see more tacking in wave spots than jiving just because Staying upwind is so important and that quick turnaround is really important. But both tacking and jiving are really important and really useful. And it depends a lot on the specifics of the situation more than the specifics of the conditions. Uh, okay. Were you going to say something, Paul? Yeah, just one comment. Like, um, for example, when you sail a lot on um, where you have wind swell, so maybe it's kind of more of side onshore or onshore, um, and you have wind swell. I like, I prefer to jibe, like to jibe the wave and gain that speed. But if we have like a swell like here, I would highly recommend to tack instead of jibing. Okay, so the- It depends a little bit where the, you the, the wave is, but like when, especially when you're wind swell, right. it's, it's nice to just like carry the speed because you go always like with the, with the wind swell, right? With the, yeah, so the about getting out of a wave, uh, I think it's good to jibe out of the wave because I, uh, let me let me start over. So I think if you're going down the line, it's good to jibe out of the wave. So if you've just gone front side, it's good to jibe out of the wave because you can continue your momentum. If you've been riding backside, I think it's good to tack out of the wave because you're continuing your momentum again. Uh, so I think you want to continue with whatever direction you were going on the wave. So if you're going backside, tack off the wave. If you're going front side, jibe off the wave. For swell and chop, I think if you have these big ocean swells, it's good to jibe because tacking can be tricky in the uh, more turbulent waters. And jibing is actually easier because you can jibe on the face of these swells like Paul is talking about and really keep your speed. And having a surface, like a, a more vertical surface to turn on, like a, like a swell out on the outside, allows you to also jibe tighter. So you can do a really tight jibe and still keep your speed. So in those conditions, jibing is, is really good. Uh, and it, it can give you more confidence because it's also easier in that kind of turbulent ocean with swell and big chop, whereas tacking is more difficult. And so I, at the end of the day, you know, you, confidence is, is key, right? You, the more, you want to be confident, you want to be committed. And so if you can do things to make yourself more confident, then you should. And so I think in choppy waters with swell, uh, you want to be jibing and then uh, otherwise tacking. And then for getting off the wave, you want to kind of carry your momentum. So if you've been going front side, jibe. If you've been going back side, tack. Um, all right, so we've got a few more minutes and I'm just gonna walk through the... Maybe there's another question. Oh yeah, we've got more questions. So let's check the questions. Dom Dom's asking about tips for light wind tacks. I think light wind tacks, uh, it's just all about balance. And so you, you really want to be working on that balance. Uh, so you want to focus on staying centered on the board, staying around the mass track. So like the area between the two straps and the mast is like the floatiest or a little bit in front of the mast is the floatiest area of the board. So you want to keep your weight, you know, like one foot right in front of the, the mast and then one foot between the two straps. 
and that's the floatiest area of the board. And you want to be around the center line of the board. And so you want to think about staying, you know, really on the center of the board. You open the sail and sheet in the sail as you're going into the tack to make room on the other side. So that you, when you transition, you go also to the center center line of the board and stay on that that same place. So one foot between the two straps and one foot next to the mast. And I think that, like I talked about before about carving up wind, I think that can also help in light wind because then you're getting the board nose more into the turn, more around the turn while you still have speed and momentum. And so then once you've transitioned in the tack, you have less of that, like just standing there trying to move the board around, right? Because the board is already kind of moved. So then you can get going more quickly, uh, which can really help a lot because then you have to balance less, right? There's less time where you have to balance. So the more you turn the board in the beginning using that momentum, uh, the, the less kind of the, that standing balancing that you have to do. Um, yeah, speed is your friend. All right, we've got, we've got another question. Is there a difference between onshore forward technique and sideshore forward technique? No, not really. If you start doing big forwards, the technique can be, be different if you're going higher. But for just normal forwards, it doesn't really matter what the wind is like. You know, forwards are really simple dynamic. It's scary, and that's what makes it difficult. But the dynamic of the move is actually really simple. You're basically just sheeting in the sail really hard, and it's pulling you around in the rotation, right? It's not a somersault. The sail is pulling you around. So you're just pushing the sail forward, sheeting in, and then you just ride the rotation that the sail creates from that motion. Uh, we've got some, we've got some, let's, let's make sure we've gone through all the footage. Uh, I think there's a forward in here. We did the tacks, we did the bottom turns. Uh, so here's, here's one from Tristan. His question is about uh, going into a taka. So here he hits, hits the wave, gets the slide. So this is a great, great entry into a taka. So what I want to see is just so hitting the wave like he does and then just really pushing more forward, leaning a bit more forward, looking with his head around and just really accentuating that, that leaning forward. And then he'll start rotating the takas and I want to see how they go. Um, here's the taka from Ernest that we went through last week. Um, Here's the Dom Dom clip that we went through last week. Um, again, if you're not in the Facebook group, join the Facebook group, post in the Facebook group. Here are all the, um, all the post. Okay, so here's something from James about forward loops. Unfortunately, he hurt his foot doing one. Here's a video. It looks like a wing. Yeah. So that's actually a nice rotation. Looks like a cheese roll. Looks kind of cheese roll -y. So we've only got a minute left. Um, I've talked a lot about forwards in past videos and I, I'm sure I will more in the future. But all I want to say for now is the forward is not a summer assault. The key to the forward is using the sail to get the rotation for you. Wide grip, really wide grip, grip all the way back, push forward the front end, bring the back end in and look back. And really it's this like pulling motion that then loads up the sail and you just tuck up your feet and go along for the ride. So it's, it's really important to get that wide grip, really important to look back with your head, really important to use the sail to do the rotation rather than trying to do a somersault. I think that's really the most important, and most important tip. Bit more downwind. Yeah, and you can take off more downwind. That's maybe that's maybe um, a good thing for James to try. Uh, because the more downwind you're going, the less vertical you're going, which which just ends up with a, a softer landing, right? If if you're doing more horizontal, you're not landing end over end and landing so hard. Sure. All right, guys, thanks for joining us. This has Jumbo been Jumbo. great. Uh, come to the Facebook group, post your videos, ask your questions. Uh, I've been really enjoying the sessions and yeah. Try the workout. I mean, yeah, try the bottom trim technique. Let me know how it goes. Let us know if you've applied these tips. Um, 
we're going to be doing the same thing again. I would try Taka today. Next week, Paul's going to try Taka. Um, maybe we can meet up in Europe as well if people are meeting up, if that's a thing that's happening. So stay tuned. Join us in the Facebook group. Bye, Dom Ram. Bye, Toby. See you guys. Bye to the rest. <laughs>